Hello everyone, this is Chino Rodriguez and today I'm going to cover how to install different instances of the same version of a server-based application. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, for this example, I'm going to use a regular application that's not server-based, but the concept is going to be exactly the same. Okay, so for this instance, we're going to go ahead and install version 667, so version 6.6.7 .6 of Notepad++. And we're going to pretend that in three different locations, let's say we have an Akron location, we have a Stowe location, a Medina location, that in each location there, there's a different database, but they're running the same version of the application. I'm going to show you how to go ahead and install the same version without having any dependency problems. All right, so you would go ahead and go with your installation as you normally would. Um, here we're going to go ahead and name this Akron. This is going to be our first one. Okay. During the installation, it doesn't really matter what settings you pick because since it's a server-based application, what will happen is that in the directory where this is stored, there'll be a configuration file. And so in the, uh, in the beginning of that configuration file, there'll be a, a location path uh, right on the very top and it'll point to either a load balancer or directly uh, to a server and that's how it knows where to go to to you know hit the right server and, and get the you know right database so on and so forth all right so I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of here and I'm gonna rename this shortcut to Akron so that way we don't get confused later on all right, so here's our Akron one. As you can see, I launched it. It works perfectly fine. Um, when it comes to the server-based application, the same version doesn't need to be reinstalled. It's already registered in the registry, and it's also here under Programs and Features, as you can see, 667. What you would be doing is you would go back to your local drive. It's a 32-bit uh, um application so we're going to go to the x86 folder and what you're going to do is just copy that directory now you want to be really careful let me emphasize this you don't since this was the first directory that was created and it's linked to the dll's that are registered on the system you don't want to change that name because the minute you change the name the location path is no longer valid and you'll start getting errors so what you want to do is you want to go ahead and copy this and then paste it. Now with the copy, all you have to do is rename it. So anything past the original one, you can keep changing it, doesn't matter. But that first one, if you accidentally screwed up and you renamed it and you're like, eh, I'm going to name this one Stowe and then put this one as Akron. That's a no-no. You're going to start having problems. All right, so let's go ahead and we're going to rename this to Stowe. And again, everything's in the configuration file. So the path where this is going to go is going to hit a different server each time. You don't got to worry about that. You just don't want to change the original directory because that's how it was registered um, in the beginning. And so once you change that, it, it won't work. All right. So let's go ahead and copy the stow directory and paste it. And we'll name this one Medina. So now we have our three locations. We have Akron, Stowe, and Medina. And again, the, the way the system will know is, so first let's go to, let's go to Medina. In the Medina, you'll have the application icon, and then you'll just send this to the desktop. Uh, once it goes to the desktop, we'll go ahead and rename it, and we'll name it Medina. So that way, 
the end user knows that this that this is Medina. There we go. Okay. Um, then we're gonna do the same thing for Sto. We're gonna open the directory, and then for this one, because it's gonna point here, and then from here it's gonna look at the configuration file. And so if we're pointing to a different folder, the other folder is gonna have a different configuration file, and it'll hit a different server. So that's why we're creating the shortcut from within the directory. All right, so then this one we're going to go ahead and send to the desktop as well. And then this one's going to be named Sto. All right. There we go. Well, it seems to have an additional space there. Let's get rid of it. Okay, so now we have Akron. It's launching fine. Medina, it's launching fine, and stow. And again, remember, the configuration files is what's going to tell it which database to hit. So once you copy that without altering the original one that was used um, to install the application, you should be fine. And that is how you install different instances of the same version of a server-based application. Thanks for watching.